I don't want Chinese peptides. <laughs> All right, I hear this from guys every week and I get it. You want quality, you want safety, you wanna know what you're actually putting in your body. So you go out and you find a company that says US GMP manufactured and you pay the premium because you think you're getting something better. But here's the pattern I keep seeing. People are paying twice as much for a vial they think was made in America when it came from the same exact place as the cheaper vial they were trying to avoid. And nobody's talking about this because the companies benefiting from this confusion have no incentive to tell you the truth. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly where peptides actually come from who's really making them, and why the way people are trying to solve this problem is actually making things worse for everyone. But before I can do that, I need to give you some context, because if you don't understand how this industry actually works, none of this is gonna make any sense to you. So look, I've been in the gray market peptide and anabolic space since around 2002. And when I started doing this, the way we got the things we couldn't get here was by sending a Western Union to a random guy in China and having absolutely no idea where it came from or if it was even going to show up. You'd send your money and then three to five weeks later, a box would show up from DHL or some random courier and you had no idea if you actually got what you paid for. There were no COAs, there was no third party testing, there was no customer service, you wired money to a stranger and you hoped for the best. So when I see people today who are discovering peptides for the first time demanding pharmaceutical grade reassurance while expecting to pay Chinese gray market prices and complaining that they can't verify purity to their satisfaction, I have to be honest with you. That expectation is delusional. And I get it. You didn't know. Nobody explained this to you. And by me making this video, I'm actually blowing the lid on an entire industry that is out to get your money and taking advantage of you. So let me show you how this industry actually works and why the current approach is destroying the very thing people are trying to protect. So let's start with the basics of how peptides are actually made. Peptides are chains of amino acids that get built one at a time through a process called solid phase peptide synthesis. Each amino acid gets attached to a resin, protected, washed, and then one is added. And you repeat that cycle for every single amino acid. Then the peptide gets cleaved from the resin and purified through a process called HPLC. Now, Here's why this matters. This isn't like testosterone or anabolic steroids where you can buy raw powder from China and brew it in your garage. Plenty of guys have done exactly that for decades with testosterone. Peptides are completely different. You can't make these in your basement. The barrier to entry is extremely high because the equipment alone costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and it requires sterile laboratory conditions and trained chemists to operate. People are not making peptides in their garage and even the facilities that can do this still need raw materials, protected amino acids, resins, coupling reagents, solvents, and those raw materials come from somewhere. China produces 80% of the global generic API supply, which means that every peptide manufacturer on earth is dependent on Chinese chemical supply chains for their building blocks. So even if final synthesis happens in the United States, the raw materials trace back to the same source. So now that you understand how peptides are made, let me show you who's actually making them in the United States. There are about five facilities in the entire country that manufacture peptides at scale. You have Cordon Pharma in Boulder, Colorado with about 300 employees and 10,000 liters of reactor capacity. You have Ambio Farm, which operates facilities in both South Carolina and Shanghai. 
You have CPC Scientific, which is primarily based in Hangzhou, China, and is building a California facility that won't even be operational until 2026. You have SK Farm Taco in California, which is also coming online in 2026. And you have Baycam and Cambrex doing pharmaceutical API production. Now, here's the key. These facilities are contracted to pharmaceutical companies. They produce peptides for FDA-approved drugs and clinical trials worth millions of dollars. They serve compounding pharmacy distributors like PCCA, and their production is scheduled months in advance through multi-million dollar contracts. These facilities are not fielding orders for 500 vials from researchpeptidesusa.com because US GMP production costs hundreds to thousands of dollars per gram. So if a company is selling you a 10 milligram vial for $50 and still making profit, that vial did not come from a US GMP facility because the economics are impossible and the mass supply does not add up. So if there are only five facilities and none of them are selling to research peptide websites, then where are these companies getting their peptides? Chinese manufacturers offer OEM and ODM services where you can buy bulk peptide and get custom branding with your label on the vial. Some platforms have zero minimum orders and there are over 190 peptides available for private labeling. This is not a secret. You can actually find these services on Alibaba and MadeInChina.com right now. So when a company claims that their peptides are made in the USA, what they actually mean is one of four things. Number one, Either they're just outright lying and rebranding Chinese product, which is most of them. Or number two, a U.S. address receives shipments from China, aliquots them into vials, and ships them out while the actual synthesis happened overseas. Three, they're sourcing them from a company like Ambiofarm that has facilities in both the U.S. and China, and I'll let you guess which facility actually made yours. Or number four, they receive Chinese bulk, tested at a U.S. lab, call it U.S. quality control, and then market it as U.S. made. The uncomfortable truth is that if you're buying research peptides, you're almost certainly using Chinese peptides regardless of whether you pay twice as much or not. The country of origin is not the differentiator you think it is. So at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, I just need to find companies with third-party testing and COAs because that's how I verify quality. And I get why you'd think that, but here's where things start to get complicated. Let me first explain what a COA actually is. COA stands for Certificate of Analysis, and it's a document from a laboratory that shows the results of a testing done on a sample. What you'll typically see on a COA is the peptide name and batch number, the date of analysis, the testing method used, which is usually HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography, the purity percentage, which tells you how much of the sample is actually peptide versus impurities, sometimes amino acid sequencing to confirm the peptide is structured correctly, sometimes mass spectrometry results to confirm molecular weight, bacterial endotoxin testing for injectables, and the name of the lab that performed the testing. Now, let me explain how COAs became a thing in the industry in the first place. Initially, COAs were used to verify suppliers for the research companies themselves. This was business-to-business -business verification where a research company would send a sample to a lab to make sure their supplier wasn't sending garbage. This is what the companies I work with do. This was never intended to be made public to the consumer. But at some point, companies started making their COAs public as a way to differentiate themselves. They were basically saying on TikTok, look, we test our stuff. We're transparent. Trust us. Buy our shit. And it works. It became a marketing advantage. So now every company has to do it or they look suspect by comparison. But here's the thing that nobody wants to say out loud. These are research chemicals sold for research purposes only. If you are actually using them for research, you have the equipment to verify purity yourself, you have a lab, you have testing capabilities. That's what research means. You should not need to rely on a COA from a third party lab. And the fact that consumers are demanding public COAs is an admission that they're not using these for research. And everybody knows this, 
but nobody says it. And then you have content creators on social media talking about purity and heavy metals and contamination, creating fear content because fear drives engagement. These issues are far less common than people realize. But fear content gets views, so creators make more of it, and it creates noise in the space that doesn't actually serve the consumer. It just makes everyone more paranoid while providing no real solutions. Here's what's really happening. Consumers want cheap research chemical prices, but they also want pharmaceutical grade assurance. And that's a contradiction. The reason why research peptides are cheap is because they don't go through FDA red tape. Getting into the pharmaceutical side of things is extremely expensive, which is why peptides on that side of the fence cost what they cost. If you want GMP guarantees, you have to be willing to pay GMP prices through the conventional medical system. You can't have both. And here's the part that nobody's talking about. Every time a research company sends a batch to Janoshik or Colmeric, those results become public. When you make results public to consumers, you also make them public to the FDA. You make them public to law enforcement. You make them public to pharmaceutical companies who are looking to protect their investments. Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk are pressuring the FDA to enforce these laws because they have billions of dollars at stake. And every public COA is essentially a vote for the FDA to place that company under extreme scrutiny. So the transparency that consumers are demanding is creating the paper trail that will shut these companies down. So the people demanding proof that peptides are real and pure are the same people creating the evidence trail that will end their access to affordable peptides. And the mom and pop shops, the small research chemical companies that you see popping up reselling peptides, they have no choice but to get these COAs because they feel like they can't compete in the space unless they do. The industry is eating itself and nobody seems to understand that they're contributing to the problem. So what does this actually mean for you? Well, the way I see it is you have two options and you need to be very honest with yourself about which one you're choosing. Option one is to go legitimate, work with a TRT clinic or compounding pharmacy and pay the premium, get medical oversight, get pharmaceutical grade product and accept that this is the cost of that guarantee. Or option two is to accept research chemical reality. Understand that you're buying research chemicals for research purposes only and that the prices are low because the regulatory burden is low. Stop demanding that research companies prove themselves to you publicly because that public proof is what's getting them shut down. Find a supplier you trust based on reputation and track record and understand that you are participating in a gray market. What you should not do is buy research peptides at research prices while demanding pharmaceutical level proof and transparency while complaining about Chinese manufacturing and expect the industry to survive your scrutiny. That combination of expectations is not sustainable. And if you're going to participate in the research chemical space, understand what that means. These companies are operating in a gray area and the more you drag them into the light, the faster that gray area disappears. You cannot have cheap peptides and full public transparency and expect the industry to continue existing. Those three things do not go together. Look man, I already have a reputation in this space for being the guy who speaks truth and my goal is to help you first. I've been in the fitness industry selling coaching for nearly a decade and I can tell you that there are very few creators businesses, and coaches out there who actually have the best interest of their clients at heart. My goal is and always has been to place the consumer first, and I wouldn't be providing this information unless I genuinely cared. I want to look out for you and your best interest while helping you stay informed so that you can understand what you're doing rather than just following trends promoted on the internet by creators and people trying to take your money. So if you want help staying up to date on peptide research and how to navigate this space responsibly, there's a link in the description of this video to join my free school community where I share clear breakdowns of studies, practical strategies, and resources that make all this sustainable and easy to follow. 
All you have to do to join is just tap the link to sign up for a free account and we'll get you access. One more thing, make sure you drop your questions in the comments below and subscribe to the channel if you want more real world insights on supplements, peptides, and proven methods to get lean and strong the right way. I really hope this video was valuable for you. I know it's gonna be a controversial one, but I'll see you next week.